I'm Bob Roberts, lead designer on Shadow of Mordor, and you are watching Eurogamer. Greetings, Goblin Slayers. It is I, Ian, son of Hickton, at your service once again. So it turns out Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor is pretty great then. It received an 8 out of 10 in our official review, which you can totally find a link to in the video description, and feedback from critics and consumers alike has been almost unanimously positive. One angle of praise comes from the fact that the events within the game mesh so well with the established canon. It draws inspiration from some of Tolkien's unfinished tales, while its overall look and character stylings could have easily been lifted straight from a Peter Jackson movie. This is great of course, but it left me wondering why, if the game is so canon, that Monolith and Warner have decided not to use the Lord of the Rings name in the title. Considering it's so well known, it seems like an odd omission. Is it something to do with legal issues maybe? Perhaps it's a mere stylistic choice. I asked Bob Roberts to set the record straight. <laughs> One of the things that our goals from the beginning was not to make a, a movie game, not to just like rehash the same events over again. So just trying to make the best game we can and make it clear that this is its own thing. It's its own story, it's its own experience. We're not just rehashing a movie. And so giving it a name that, that is clearly its own thing, I think helps kind of separate it as, uh, if this is your entry point into Lord of the Rings, if you've never seen the movies or never read the books, this will make sense, you'll be able to start here, and then hopefully all the other stories you see beyond that once you dig into the rest of the world uh, are just enriched by it. I'm not gonna lie, Bob, Shadows of Mordor does seem to be a bit of a surprise hit. Do you think Warner will now push you to make a sequel? Would you be ready to make a new one? Willing to make a new one? Well, so the reviews are looking really good. We're excited about it, but it's not out yet. We got to see how the public reacts and if they like what they get there. Obviously, it's looking good from these kinds of shows where people get a chance to try it, but once they get the full game, we'll see how they feel, and hopefully they like it enough that they want us to keep making games. So even before the reviews came in, did you have any kind of plans for sequels? Some kind of pre-planned narratives to build on just in case this one was a success? I mean, the film's a trilogy, so why not the games? Well, so we've got a bunch of DLC that we've talked about where we're going to tell a few new stories and explore some other moments in, in history here, uh, like playing as Celebrimbor is a, is a good example. But beyond what we're doing for this game, I mean, we got, we got to stay focused. Eye on the ball right now on, on this one. So finally, Bob, who is the best Lord? Lord of the Rings, of the Dance, or of the Flies? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to go with Lord of the Rings, though I know there's debate about this. <laughs> Flatly, my dear, I don't river dance. Give a damn. Sorry. Thanks, Bob. So how are you guys liking Shadow of Mordor? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you'd like more exclusive interviews, early gameplay previews and interactive live streams right there smack bang in your subscriptions feed. Go on, you know you want to and it'll be a little bit awkward if you don't. You see? Awkward? Awk? Because Lord of the Rings? No? <sighs>